Hey guys, my idea for this video is to show you end to end how to set up an AI agent that will be able to connect to the Jira API and answer questions based on your Jira tickets, like these ones. So that in the final product, we'll be able to ask questions like, what's happening in the project right now? And in the background, your AI agent is asking the Jira API about your issues and in this case, telling you that in progress issues are these ones, Neptune and Jupiter. You can see them here. Um, what's important for this tutorial is going to be uh, pretty short. Uh, and also you'll be able to go through all the steps yourselves because we are using a free QuickChat account with your free tier of messages and also a free Jira account, which you can set up for yourself. Uh, but also it's important to point out that even though the tutorial is very simple and AIs are extremely powerful these days. In order to use a bit more complicated AI endpoints, like the Jira one we're going to be using, it is still important to tune them properly, to use the right prompts, and I'm going to talk about it a bit and show you some good examples of how to set it up. So let's get started. OK, so let's get started. And let's start by setting up Jira. So I'm assuming that you already created a free account. You have one of these spaces. You have a board with issues. For our AI action, we're going to be using this endpoint here. Uh, and an interesting fact, uh, up until recently, and by that I mean just a few days or a few weeks ago, the uh, Jira API used to have an endpoint where you could just paste a string and then that would be your search endpoint. You can paste any sort of query and uh, it will search your issues using that. Now it's been uh, fully deprecated and deactivated in favor of this endpoint where queries uh, don't come in the form of a raw string, but rather they need to follow the syntax of JQL, Jira query language, which maybe looks a bit like SQL. Uh, here we can see an example query, which says project equals HSP. Uh, in the past, in the simpler setup, you would just use query equals HSP. Um, it's a bit of an uh, interesting fact to to consider that now in 2025, I think we're at this breaking point where in the past it was people using uh, ABI endpoints. Now increasingly it's going to be AI agents using ABI endpoints. In a few years, I bet 95% of all calls sent to uh, APIs will be AI agents. So in that sense, uh, it's a very interesting move to make your uh, endpoints just more powerful. Uh, for people, um, a new syntax means needing to learn how to use it and to actually make use of the new syntax, uh, a, a developer needs to sit down, understand it and, and code it up. Uh, for the AI agent, it's just like that. Uh, it's already aware of the syntax and can use the more powerful uh, endpoints just out of the box. However, some optimizations are needed, and I will show that in uh, later in the in the video. Uh, so we already know which endpoint we will be using, and we know where in the documentation it is. The documentation will come handy later when we're setting up the actual AI action. But before we start, let me just point out that all the steps that I'm going through here are listed in this blog post and on the QuickChat AI blog. It's linked uh, to in the description of this video, and we will actually be following all the steps uh, now in this video. And actually, let's find our next section, which is setting up the Jira API uh, authentication token. We're going to be using this URL now. Here's the link um, that will take us to the page where we can create our authentication tokens on Jira. Uh, and here's what the page uh, looks like, and here are some tokens I already created. So let's go ahead and create a new one. Create API token, give it some name, uh, give it some expiration date, and hit create. Uh, this shows us our, our new token. Let's make sure it's copied to clipboard because we won't see it again, and we're going to be using it in our next steps. Okay, so you uh, created and copied your API token which looks something like this. Now, in order to be able to use it in the AI action, it needs to be base64 encoded. Uh, in the blog post, I give you two different ways to do that. One, a bit more advanced, is to use a little Python script, uh, paste your API token, your email, colon, API token, base64 encoded, and there's your credentials. But you can also use a free a, a tool like 
this one here. Uh, it's important that you use the uh, live mode so that uh, your token doesn't get sent anywhere and it's all happening in your browser. Here is your email, colon, your um, token. And here is the basic for encoded version of the token you can use. And the, the full version you're going to be using is basic because you're using basic author authorization, basic, space, and the token. And that's what we're going to be using. By the way, uh, when we, you're reading the blog post, if you have any questions, you can ask this little guy here and he's going to answer any questions you might have. Now that we have the token and it's encoded, we can go back to the QuickChat dashboard and start setting up the A action. Let's go to the actions and MCPs section. And here, uh, I already set up the action, but let's go through the steps. Uh, you will go and start by clicking this, this button here. Um, as for the name, a really good name is Search Jira Issues. And the first section here is, is called what to ask the user first. So let's think about it for a moment. If the AI agent is supposed to use the API to answer questions based on the Jira issues, it needs to know what to search for. If I ask it, uh, what's up with Project Mercury, it needs to go and query um, Mercury as the, as the word to look for. If I go and ask, uh, give me all the information about ongoing issues on Project Mercury this week, it will need to construct a JQL query that has all that information. And that's what we're setting up here. Uh, the name of the parameter is JQL. Uh, just to emphasize that the AI agent needs to construct a query in the JQL language. And here is the description we're giving it to make sure that it uh, performs great. Uh, let's go to the blog post to see exactly what the description is and why we set it up that way. So the input parameter description is essentially a prompt where we teach the LLM how to think about this parameter, how to use it, actually how to understand what the user wants in the conversation and translate it into a query. Uh, let's read what the description says. So it's a single valid JQL string built per the description. We want to favor recall. So what, what does it mean? We want to avoid situations where the user specifies which issues they're interested in, and then the LLM adds too many constraints and the query ends up returning nothing. So we want to teach it to favor recall and favor adding terms using the OR structure rather than the AND structure, right? So if the user says something like, uh, give me all the issues that are happening this week and are about infrastructure and um, are about API, we would rather want it to say um, text contains API or text contains integration rather than and, uh, because the and might tend to return nothing, whereas or will return all of the issues and then the LM will have another chance to look through them and see how to filter again. Um, we also uh, tell the LLM to avoid uh, creating custom fields that uh, haven't been defined, use parentheses uh, for grouping, and we give it some examples of what good queries look like. So let me highlight once again the importance of what we did here in this uh, previous step. Um, it's one thing to connect a tool to an LLM, but every time we need to sit down and think about what our exact use case is, and if we have a little bit of prompt that very precisely tells the LLM how to use the particular tool that we gave it in this particular context. Now let's go back to the AI action page in QuickChat and continue setting it up. Uh, we want to select the get method, use this exact URL, again go to the blog post to get the exact values, uh, and now the headers of the request. We want to use that uh, usual accept application JSON header. And for authorization, we're going to put the value that we prepared beforehand, which is basic space, and then our base64 encoded token. And the final very, very important component is the API action description. API action description is another important opportunity for us to teach the LLM, the AI agent, how to use the action in our particular use case. Again, we are highlighting the need to prioritize recall over precision. 
importantly, we teach something about the API endpoint and jQuery itself, that this is the best syntax to use for uh, queries that check if string contains. Um, we also teach it about uh, parentheses, uh, highlight the need not to uh, create uh, use custom fields and give it uh, more examples to use. As before, please hand, head over to the blog post uh, to read more about description, to copy the actual value and to, to read more about how, how it was set up that way. Now let's go to our final step, which is the query parameters. Um, this is a very important point. Let's go back to the Jira um, documentation and we can see that these are the parameters we're going to be using. This one, the JQL and the fields. So let's start with the fields parameter. Here, it just tells the Jira API which fields to return when listing issues for us. We select just these three. Uh, to avoid having responses which are very, very long and potentially a bit difficult for the elephant to parse. Although in this case, uh, just leaving out this field wouldn't be a problem. This parameter here tells us, tells the LLM that the JQL, the, the, the crucial JQL parameter, which is the JQL string, this is going to come from our parameter which we set up here in the what to ask the user first section. Uh, in order to show you, we set it up by simply clicking on the add AI data uh, button. Uh, this button recognizes that this is the one uh, dynamic parameter that we defined earlier, and we just select it and add it here. So now our AI action is fully set up with all the static values like uh, headers or fields and the descriptions and the dynamic value JQL, which will only be determined in the course of conversation based on what the user has said. Now that the AI action is set up, let's test it. But before we test it in a conversation by talking to our AI agent, let's just make sure that the part where we call the API endpoint itself is working as expected. We set up the AI action with its static descriptions and headers and the URL. And as you remember, there's one dynamic parameter which is filled out by the AI agent during the conversation based on what the user has said so far. And the parameter is the JQL query. So what this tab allows us to do is to input a fake value of the JQL query parameter and check what the response of the API would be. So let's try something simple like project equals solar system. Uh, just as a reminder that this was the name of our, of our project here. Let's hit test the API. And we can see that in the response, we got a number of issues back. And the number of issues that we got is six. We got all of, all of those in our project here. So let's now try a bit more and a bit more restrictive uh, query. I've got it here where we are going to select this project. And we're going to do a text search for the word mer Mercury. So we're going to be looking for issues with that word in description or name, and we're going to order them uh, by the creation date. So let's hit go. And we can see that the response now contains only one issue, which is final testing for Mercury. As you can see, this is indeed the only issue that has Mercury in uh, anywhere in its body. Um, and again, we got the summary, uh, the description and the status fields. Um, so now, now that we are happy that our API endpoint itself works fine, we can go to testing it fully end-to-end -end in a conversation with the AI agent. So let's start with a simple question like what projects are currently on and what is happening? So this, is, this might be a question that you ask after you've been on holiday for quite a while. Uh, and you can see that it pretty much picked up all the information we have. Uh, we have the name of the project. Uh, we have the in-progress uh, issues. Uh, we can see that Pluto is highlighted here as in-progress, but actually in review. And uh, all of our to-do projects uh, issues sorry, are here. And since we're testing with AI, let's try something a bit more ambitious. So let's try and ask a question like any tasks 
on the planets upstream of Earth. Let's see if it's going to figure out that one. Um, yeah, uh, th this one's quite fun. So it did figure out that planets upstream of Earth, what I meant here is is about Mercury and, and uh, Venus, and it was able to look at my board in a slightly abstract way and to say, okay, these are actually presenting planets the upstream of Earth, and it gave me um, a summary of what is happening with those. Thank you so much for, for watching the video. So let's uh, recap what we did here. Uh, we created a free Creature account. We created a free Jira account. Uh, we looked through the Jira API documentation, in particular, the uh, endpoint allowing us to fetch issues using the JQL query language. We set up uh, a QuickShot AI action that defined the JQL parameter to be created dynamically by AI based on what the user has said. We set up the authentication to be able to use the Jira endpoint as a user of that particular account. Uh, and we tested with some uh, conversations to check that the AI actually has has a pretty good uh, understanding of what we're talking about and can use the API endpoint in a very flexible way. Uh, thanks a lot for listening. I highly recommend uh, going to the blog post and actually reading through all the steps where you can copy the actual prompts. Uh, once again, I will highlight it that this part is crucially important to get the AI agent's performance really where it needs to be. And I highly recommend reading through it uh, if you have any questions, if you have any suggestions, please feel free to reach out in the comments on our uh, social media. Uh, we'll be happy to share more and many, many more of these tutorials will come out where we walk you step by step through um, creating AI agents uh, using tools that actually work great and are uh, optimized for particular use cases. Thank you so much and see you soon.